Yeah, so let's talk about the um, epoxy resin that are used to make uh, epoxy surfboards. Um, so uh, you probably know that there's two components uh, that you mix together to make the epoxy. Um, the first component is, is called the epoxide. Uh, I'll show you what epoxide is in a minute. Uh, uh, it's the type of chemical that's used to make epoxy resins. And the second component is, is the hardener. Um, and I'll show you what that is in a minute. And these two compounds by themselves are stable. When you mix them together, they react to form this hardened plastic called epoxy. Um, let's talk about uh, what the epoxide is, the, the epoxide component. Uh, it's actually this epoxide, which means uh, it has two epoxides. Um, so let me, let me show you the chemical structure of this epoxide. Uh, it has a, a benzene ring. We talked about the benzene ring when we talked about styrofoam. Uh, it's six carbons in a ring, uh, double bond, single bond, double bond, single bond, double bond. Um, and this carbon, remember, every carbon has four bonds, so here's one, two, three, but this has another bond to another carbon. This has a, another carbon with three hydrogens, another carbon with three hydrogens. This carbon is attached to another benzene ring. Double bond, single bond, double bond, single bond, double bond. And then here we have hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. Sorry, carbon, hydrogen. Carbon, which is opposite this carbon here, has a has an oxygen and another hydrogen. And uh, sorry about that. This also has oxygen. So this this compound here is is called this uh, phenol A. You've probably heard a lot about this phenol A. Uh, it's been considered. Uh, as a type of toxin that's present in certain types of plastic. Um, I, I think that the toxicity of bisphenol A is, is very controversial. Um, uh, anyways, uh, bisphenol A, um, then to make the bisepoxide, we take off this hydrogen and we attach a carbon with two hydrogens. Carbon, carbon, oxygen. Every, every, bond, every carbon has four bonds, one, two, three, four. So this has two hydrogens. And oxygen has two bonds. Um, and then over here we take off this hydrogen, put a carbon. Um, carbon. Carbon. Oxygen. So this this, this is a three-membered ring, this triangle here, one, two, three, and one of the oxygen, one of the atoms in the ring is an oxygen, and this, this part of the molecule is called an epoxide. Okay, we have another one here. So that's why this is called the bis epoxide. So the bis epoxide is, a, is, is derived from the centerpiece, which is called bisphenol A. And there's probably a trace amount of bisphenol A in the epoxide component of the epoxy resin, so that's why there's some concern about uh, the toxicity of epoxide, uh, epoxy resins. But, um, and yeah, you should wear gloves and uh, dispose of it properly. Now, uh, this is what the epoxide component is to epoxy resins, and it's pretty much only this in the bottle, and this tends to be a, a, a gooey liquid at room temperature, but 
it can start to crystallize um, and form a crystalline solid. Uh, this is a totally reversible reaction. If you take the crystalline solid and heat it up in, in a bucket of warm water in the microwave, it'll melt the crystals and go back to the liquid. And so don't throw away your epoxide uh, component if it starts to crystallize. It's perfectly good. You just have to warm it up um, to get it to melt. Um, okay, so that's the bis epoxide. So what's in the hardware component? The hardware component, uh, the other bottle, is it's called a, a bis amine. So again, two two amines. Uh, an amine is an organic compound that has uh, the so-called amino group. An amino group is a nitrogen with two hydrogens on it. And the one amino group is attached to a spacer molecule. Uh, and then we have another amino group. Okay, so this is an amino group. Uh, so this is a bisamine. This is the harder. And um, there's various types of spacers that connect the two amines together. Um, uh, companies like Resident Research use what's called a modern bisamine. Uh, and I'm not going to show you the uh, structure of the spacer here because I don't want them to get mad at me. But it doesn't really matter. Uh, it's some spacer that connects the two amines. Um, now, uh, the bisamine which is a liquid, it, it tends to be pretty viscous and it makes it difficult to spread uh, the mixture onto a uh, onto fiberglass cloth to, to, to glass a surfboard. So the hardware is almost always uh, mixed with, with a, a, a thinning agent, right? And um, uh, resin research uses a, an organic solvent uh, that they mix with the the bisamine to make it thinner, less viscous. Um, and I won't go into that uh, other than to say it's there. Now, uh, so what happens when we mix the hardener with the bis epoxide? Both of these compounds are stable on their own, but when we mix them together, uh, there's a chemical reaction. And I won't go into details, but basically the rules of chemistry dictate that. Uh, so here's our this amine, here's the spacer, let's just call it A for the amino group. And here's our uh, bis epoxide, E for the epoxide with its spacer and another epoxide. So basically, uh, uh, A cannot react with other A's and E cannot react with other E's, but A and E can react and form a bond between them. And actually, uh, rules of chemistry dictate that every a can react with two E's. So what happens is uh, we make two AE bonds. Okay. But of course this bonding can propagate because this this guy here can react with two epoxides. Right, but we're not done yet because here we have two more E's. Here are two more E's and uh, this can react with more amines. Okay. Etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And so, so what this does is it forms a three-dimensional connection between all the bonds. It's not just in the plane of the board, but it's in three dimensions. It's like a three-dimensional spider web. And this this is what the hardened brick hard epox epoxy is. Okay. So epoxy is this resin, and it's made of bis epoxide and bisamines. And when you mix the two together, they react. Every amino group reacts with two epoxide groups, and the thing propagates because each of these molecules has two reactive ends, right? So you make these chains in, in three dimensions. So you can see that every A needs two E's. Okay. So right away, uh, you get a sense of why, you know, when you've ever used epox epoxide, re epoxy resins, you always mix two parts of the epoxide component with one part of the harder component. You can see that every A requires two E's. Now, if you 
you've been listening carefully, you'll remember that the histamine usually contains a thinning agent. So if we add, let's say, one gram of, uh, so you might think we should let's add two grams of the uh, bis epoxide component uh, with one gram of the histamine, the hardness component. Histamine. Uh, and then you'll have this two to one ratio like I talked talk about. But uh, if you remember, this, this also contains the, the thinning, the thinner. Um, so maybe, uh, maybe if it's a one to one mixture, maybe this is only half, half a gram of the um, bisamine. Okay, and we don't have this two to one ratio anymore. But let, let's think about this a little bit. Um, turns out this is a little bit of the chemistry, but it's not very hard. It's just a little bit of algebra. So it turns out um, the, the the number of, of atoms in in the bis epoxide is about uh, two times the number of atoms. So the the harder the bismine. So the the bisopoxide molecule is just a bigger molecule and has twice as many atoms. So if you think about it, uh, the weight, the mass of the bisopoxide molecule will be about twice the mass of the bismine molecule. So let, let's, let's let's do a simple calculation here. It's quite simple. Um, so let's say um, let's say we take we take two grams of bisopoxide. Uh, all right, so how many epoxide, how many bis epoxide molecules are there? Well, it's, uh, 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 we would have to divide by the, let's call it Z, which is the, the grams per molecule of the bis epoxide. So grams of bis epoxide divided by grams per molecule would be, would be the uh, number of bis epoxide molecules. Okay, and and let's divide this by uh, the grams of hardener we added. Suppose uh, the manufacturer tells you to add two grams of this epoxide and one gram of hardener, and suppose the hardener has uh, equal weights of thinner and bisamine. So one gram of hardener is really 0.5 grams of bisamine. But remember I told you the bisamine uh, is about half the size of this epoxide. So the number of grams per molecule of bisamine is not Z, but Z over 2. Okay. So, if you, if you, so now this is the number of bis epoxide molecules divided by the number of bisamine molecules. And you can see that 2 divided by 0.5 is 4. But, um, uh, we have to divide by this extra factor of two. So, so th this ratio is two. So in fact, uh, even though the hardener is roughly 50% bisamine by weight and 50% thinner by weight, when we add twice as much weight of bis epoxide to hardener, we're really adding twice as many bis epoxide molecules as we are adding bisamine molecules. And that's what we want because remember, every A, reacts with two E's. So we need twice as many E molecules as we, as we have A's. So now uh, you can ex explain your circle friends in the bar, you know, why we mix epoxide in the two to one ratio. It's based on the chemistry. Now, um, all right, so uh, the epoxide component is pretty much pure bis epoxide. The amine component, I said, is the bisamine plus the thinner. There's also um, other things in epoxy resin mixtures. Um, we, we need to have UV stabilizers. I mean, we don't need to, but it, it's better product. Um, the problem is, is that the bis epoxide component with this, these aromatic rings, remember I showed you these benzene rings, they're also called aromatic rings. Uh, they absorb very strongly UV light. 
So the they, UV light shines on the surfboard. These molecules take up the energy of the light, and most of the time, the energy is dissipated as heat. That's why you know, your surfboard gets warm when you leave it out in the sun. Now it's absorbing light, and, and that's turning into heat. Um, but every once in a while, uh, UV light can break some of the bonds in the uh, bis epoxide. And, and bond breakage is bad, right? Because this is going to destroy the three-dimensional uh, web that holds the resin together. So given enough time and enough photochemistry induced by solar UV light, uh, your, your surfboard resin is going to break down. And this is a problem with all plastics, and all plastics that are used outdoors usually have some sort of UV stabilizer. Uh, so what is a UV stabilizer? There's usually two kinds. There's the UVA and the UVB, and it's sounding a lot like sunscreen. In fact, they're very similar. Uh, this absorbs uh, in one region of the ultraviolet. This absorbs in a different region, and the two together covers sort of the relevant region put out by the sun. And basically, um, these are molecules that what they are is they absorb UV light much more uh, intensively than uh, the epoxide. So in a sense, they, they steal all of the UV light uh, so that it doesn't get absorbed by the, the epoxide. Um, and most of the time, this UV light in the, that's absorbed by the stabilizer uh, is dissipated as heat. But every once in a while, uh, the UV stabilizer absorbs UV light and undergoes a chemical reaction which destroys the stabilizer. And so the UV stabilizers that are present in resin, surfboard resins, have a finite lifetime. And you know, uh, if you leave your surfboard out in the sun for uh, several months, it, it's going to degrade. You know, it's going to turn yellow, etc. And you know, how long your surfboard lasts depends on how much solar exposure you get in terms of uh, photo damage to the resin. Um, but but uh, adding these stabilizers greatly prolongs the the uh, lifetime of the epoxy the epoxy resin. And the other thing I'll say, um, maybe many of you know this, is that um, if you use EPS foam, um, you can use epoxy resin, um, but you can't use polyester resin. You know, the, the, the original style resin that's used on um, the original surfboards made out of polyurethane foam. Um, so the original foam fiberglass surfboards were made out of polyurethane with polyester resin, and we still make lots of surfboards this way. But in more modern times, we, we've, uh, we have the option of using EPS foam. But then we have to use epoxy resin because the um, polyester resin dissolves um, the styrofoam and it will just turn it into a gooey mess. If you've ever taken a styrofoam coffee cup and drip some acetone on it, uh, a little bit of acetone will totally dissolve the styrofoam cup and make a gooey mess out of it. So these guys go together. And um, but we cannot use polyester resin on EPS foam. Um, but we can use epoxy resin on polyurethane foam, so this is okay. Uh, um, so with polyurethane foam, we can use either epoxy, epoxy resin or polyester. For EPS, we have to use epoxy. And the epoxy resin does not dissolve the EPS foam, only the polyester does. Um, 